Welcome everyone and let's begin. So this is the acoustical concrete masonry presentation and it's it's what Sound Seal has to offer regarding concrete masonry units that are acoustical absorbers. Basically what concrete masonry uh, absorbers are are resonators that are built out of concrete block. And, and what they do is they have an aperture opening on the face of them that connects to the atmosphere of the room and opens up into a chamber within within the concrete block. And as the the noise goes in and out, it squeezes down, goes through the aperture opening, expands, and then it squeezes back down and comes back out. It loses a lot of energy with that. So they're very effective at absorbing low <clears throat> low frequency sound. And then what they do also is they put uh, fillers in the inside of these block, and that approves the the mid-range frequencies and the higher frequency ranges too. So they they really absorb frequencies across the board. And, and probably many of you have run across in your project, you know, needing to block the, the mid frequencies, uh, the voice speaking range. Um, and the nice thing about these products is they are gonna take care of a lot of that lower end frequency uh, issues. And uh, sometimes you're gonna see on, on specifications for projects that you'll have that requirement for the lower end to be absorbed more. Um, when you're looking at specific third octave band frequencies, which Carrie's going to get into in a little bit, but I uh, just wanted to kind of point that out that these are very good uh, low frequency absorbers, um, and also to point out that we do have a, a question uh, tab. If you have any questions as we go mm -hmm. through the presentation, please type them in, and we will address them as soon as we can. So, in order to understand what concrete mas acoustical concrete masonry is, we'll do a little fundamental. Um, a lesson here on just regular concrete masonry units and get an understanding of that. What, what you, when you see a concrete masonry wall up and, and installed, you see the face shells. So there's two face shells, one on the front and one in the back, and that's the, the wall that you see. In the internal structure is those face shells are connected by cross webs. And when those cross webs are formed, they form cores within, within the unit. And most, or I'm sorry, all block are, most all block are eight inches high and 16 inches long. And then they vary in width between four, eight, 10, and 12 inches. The, the block dimensions, if you're designing, they, they make a nominal size modular framework of, of the wall, but the block of themselves are three eighths of an inch short in height and, and in length. Their actual sizes, let's say, are seven and five eighths high by 15 and five eighths, and that's to allow for a mortar joint. So when you add a three eighths inch mortar joint, you're back to modular construction. And that's the same with acoustical concrete masonry. The concrete masonry walls, and this applies to acoustical concrete masonry, are very strong in some aspects and they're weak in others. They're very strong in compression, which means you can put 20, 30, 40 stories of, of, of uh, loads, of floors on it and it, it'll hold the weight. They're very strong in compression. They, they can support wind loads, they're very strong in that way, and shear loads so they don't overturn, but they're weak in tension. You can pull them apart real easy and you can twist them um, real easy, so they're weak in that. In order to strengthen that, and this, this applies to acoustical concrete masonry as well, you can put vertical steel within the system and grout it, that's on the left-hand side. And the right-hand side, there's horizontal reinforcing that's incorporated into the wall. And that key, that's good for crack control on these units. And it's, it's the same for acoustical concrete masonry. You can reinforce the walls and make them really strong. So now when you build these structures with acoustical concrete masonry, you have the versatility of concrete masonry. They're strong and load-bearing, they're fire resistant, they're tough wearing, which means they're gonna last a long time. Uh, low maintenance, you don't have to clean them, but maybe dust them off maybe a year, every year or so. And they'll last the, the uh, life of the structure. So with sound block, sound cell, and acoustic, you've got three performances all combined into one unit. You've got a durable structure and they offer absorption and they, they do offer uh, a fire barrier between walls too their rooms. So looking at the uh, 
the absorption of this. The sound blocks was the original uh, acoustical resonator that came on the marketplace. And what they did is they just put two aperture openings to, to open up the core space. And you can see it on the right-hand side, how that's formed. And these are individual cavities and they're all identical. So they're, they're really good at the mid, low, mid and high range frequencies. Then along came the sound cell and acoustate units and those, this, I'm gonna back up. The sound blocks have a solid top unit. And you can see it down in the, it's actually upside down in this picture on the right, but it's a solid one. So there's, so what it forms is little jars and each one are the same. With sound cell and acoustate, they're stacking volume resonators. So as you stack them upon each other, you're creating this large volume of, of a space on the inside as, and it absorbs much greater lower frequencies. Here's a picture of that shows you somewhat the internal structure of the two of them. The, the sound block units are the cap cavity ones are just little individual jars, whereas the stacking volume that you can see inside that just a huge tall volume resonator that's built. And it, if you kind of picture that, if you look at a chest of organ pipes, those those big pipes that are tall and round that produce the bass, the boom, 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 you need that sort of space to absorb that sound, which you get with sound cell and acoustate on the right, you're forming these big chambers to get these uh, waves that are 10, 15 foot long. And so what with these units, they're really good at the low frequency. You have a 100% average at the absorption of 100, 125, 160, and 200 hertz frequencies. Within the units now are placed fibrous fillers, and there's different filler shapes for different models. The uh, and that and as I mentioned before, what that does is it helps absorb the mid range and the higher range frequencies. So it's a it's a complete unit system. The sound block is on the left. It shows a fibrous filler, and it shows a sequential cavity there. So that all helps absorb um, noise with that configuration. The the middle uh, unit shows the reinforcing in the back half of it, and we'll get into that later. And the acoustate, now both of those sound block units have openings on the face shell of the unit, which faces the room. The acoustate and the sound cell have their aperture openings on the cross webs, which are back and away. So if, you're, if you uh, specify paint for these units, you would want to have the sound block units roll painted. Um, so paint it with a roller or brush. Whereas on the acoustic or sound cell, you could spray paint them uh, because they won't be clogged when the spray paint gets in there. It, it doesn't go directly on it or it would with the sound blocks. Just a comment on the uh, just the physical appearance of the block. You're, you're not going to see the, um, you know, this is a great kind of top view of the product, but you're not actually going to see that uh, the infill product whenever you're looking at the actual product. You'll just see a really nice uh, concrete, um, you know, face to that facade. <clears throat> Correct. That's the, why the uh, sound block units fillers are black, so you won't see them. And the the acoustic and sound cell can be any color they are, so because they're backing away, you don't see those. Now, as far as reinforcing the units, uh, you've got the sound block that's formed with the back half of the unit is a clear cavity. So when you stack that up one on top of the other, you've got a space for the steel and the grout to be placed in the wall. With the sound cell and the acoustic units, if you're putting reinforcing reinforcement on the up on the picture, let's say that's every third core, you would have grout shields placed in every third core, and then that creates a space for concrete and grout um, to be placed in that cavity. Uh, going into some basic noise principles, I'm sure most of you already know this, but there might be a few architects that w would benefit from this. Uh, we'll look at reflection, absorption, and diffusion. With reflected sound, if, you, if you're building hard, flat surfaces like a gymnasium out of masonry or concrete, 
you've got really hard reflective sur surfaces that are going to reverberate sound around it. So if you have a, a source sound, you've got path one that goes direct to the listener, and you've got a second source, two and three and four, and they're all arriving off off kilter, which makes the sound to the listeners really confusing because it's arriving at different times, and you have this echo and reverberation, and it's 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 really bad. It's like if you're at a high end restaurant. I'm sure everybody knows what that is. Uh, then the then comes acoustical masonry. So instead of building these walls with regular concrete block, if you throw in the acoustical masonry, you've got excellent absorption within these units that will take away the the reflection, reverberation, and echoes. Another um, good thing for sound control is sound diffusion. Whereas if you have hard flat surfaces, it's going to bounce off the walls and reach the listener, as mentioned, at different times. If you have irregular surfaces where the sound can bounce off very efficiently and it scatters, that that will help the sound. Uh, sound cell and acoustate are both irregular faced units that will also, as a, as a secondary benefit, scatter sound and provide some diffusion. You can see there on the on the, on the right hand one, there's not going to be much diffusion involved that's not absorbed, but but on the sound cell unit on the left, that darker one, you can see the the um, the scattering of that what would happen. Sound absorption, <clears throat> for those uh, who may not be, be familiar with this, is the units are tested. All material can be tested for sound absorption. You put the material in a room and they throw a loudspeaker out there with known frequencies and, and sound power. And then they measure with a, a metered microphone the reduction of that and they do calculations and find out what frequencies, what, what the material absorbed at sound at what frequencies. Yeah, so the first time they're going to blast the speakers uh, when the room is completely empty. Um, and then they'll actually add the product in and then find out the delta between the two. That's how you get your NRC, which uh, Carrie's going to talk about a little bit more. Yeah. <clears throat> right. So then this is an older way that they determined it. Well, let's rate the material in some fashion. So they they decided to, to take the 250 hertz, the 500, the 1000, and the 2000, take those four figures and average them and then round it to the nearest 0 0.05 to come up with a noise reduction coefficient. But that's was primarily the frequencies of speaking, whereas you might have lower frequencies and higher frequencies, but at least they had a number. A newer one now is the sound absorption average, and they went up one frequency and down one frequency, and they included all the frequencies between them, and they averaged all those numbers. They came up with a number to the closest 0.01, and you can see how the eight-inch sound cell rates at those and the average of that. Which means, um, if you're designing for something, Kevin, can you hear me? Uh, your audio cut out a little bit. Okay, how about now? Yeah, I, I can hear you, yes. Okay, good, because something happened. I, I had a glitch in here. Um, so if you're designing for absorption for a project, you don't want to necessarily go to the NRC number. Uh, in the blue line there, there's a, a, a one-inch panel, brand X, and those are actual numbers. And they did really good at the 5, 100, 500, 1,000, and 2,000, and 250. And they average out to a NRC of 1.0. But if you're designing for rumbles and transformers and roars and that's to try and absorb that noise, that thing is going to do absolutely almost nothing in absorbing the noise that you're targeting. So what you'd want to do is consider something that has a really good low absorption capability like, like acoustical concrete masonry. Where the, and you can see the wavelength at a 
63 hertz is 18 foot long. So these are long, big sound waves that has to be captured. And you're not going to do it with a one inch panel of acoustical uh, material. And this is an actual a case what, where they had uh, looked at the a generated noise from, from a cooling tower. And you can pl plot the sound pressure level, and you can see in the blue er blue areas there where it was greater at the low end, and the, the the majority of noise was there. So you can look at both of the 12-inch sound blocks, RCRF, or the 12-inch acoustic to see which of those you'd, you'd want to use for that particular project. And sound isolation, this is the other um, major way of measuring sound reduction. And this is between rooms. It's what they come up with a sound transmission class. And to measure this, they have one room and they, they blast speakers again. And in between the room, they build a partition of the test material. That would be the gray material shown in this illustration. And then they have a metered microphone on the other and they measure how the noise, they know what the sound power that they put out 100%, let's say, on the in the generating room, and they measure the reduction in the other room, and they come up, they do some calculations at the hertzes, and then they come up with a STC, and they give it a number. And to give a perspective of, of what STC looks like, if you were to build a two by six wood stud wall that has an STC of 34, and you can hear somebody speaking in the other room at that low, uh, if you get to STC of 40, that begins the onset of privacy. A six inch concrete masonry unit would have an STC of 46. If you fill that with solid, the STC increases to 53. And now I'm gonna compare the 12 inch CMU with a six inch solid or grotted solid side by side. They both have the same STC number. So it's not necessarily how wide you build the wall. You want to build it dense and as heavy as you can. If you get to STC of 60, that's exceptional sound barrier between um, between rooms. If you still filled a 12-inch CMU solid, you'd have an STC of 63. And you could put a, a speaker or a stereo system on one side and band playing on the other, and you'd have really good noise separation between the two rooms. And you can incorporate this aspect into the acoustical concrete masonry. On the website, www.acousticalmasonry.com, which is sound seals, you can see the STC ratings, both of, if you, if you manufacture these block in lightweight or normal weight, and then if you leave them as they are installed, you have this particular STC rating if you fill the back portion of that solid, you, you greatly increase the STC rating. So you can get STC ratings up of 55 and 60, which is way up there. It's towards the exceptional sound barrier. Here's an example where they combined the noise absorption on one side of the room and, the, and a great STC for the other, and it was at the Wacker test facility. What they do is they pour concrete and they they show their customers how well their equipment work, and then they jackhammer it out and then they pour it and they so it's back and forth. On the other side of that, they have classrooms. And what they did is they used sound cell to absorb sound on the on the classroom side so they could talk. And on the classroom on the classroom side, they they needed some quiet, so they filled that wall solid on the back half of the units, and they got achieved an SDC of 55, which, which is great, great system. Some a, uh, acoustic concrete masonry nuances. If you're designing with sound cell or acoustic, because it flares back and it, it doesn't align, the face shells don't align with a regular CMU, it needs a transition CMU at the base and at the top of the units to continue in the wall. It, you can see here on the left-hand sketch, at the bottom of the sound cell, there's a thickened face shell unit, which is 
it's called a stalled face unit. You could use a masonry solid top or bond beam, they would, they would all work, which are readily available in the masonry industry. The laying the units, do you lay them upside down or right side up? The solid block units have to be laid with the solid top units up, especially if it's outside, because if it's upside down, they'll form little cups and water will get in there and they have no way to get back out and it might freeze and pop the faces. So sound block, even inside, are always laid solid top up. The acoustic unit can be laid upside down or right side up and both on the same job just to give a different appearance. And the sound cell can be laid right side up or upside down with the chamfer at the top or the chamfer at the bottom. It just gives a little bit different look, but they're, they're both uh, attractive. But either way, they're... With the sound block units, you can get them burnished on the face on the backside. How, however, sound cell and acoustic cannot be burnished because they can't go through a grinder. You need a flat surface to do that. And sound block can have the backside of the aperture opening face can be split open to have a, a rock face. And that used to be good for where you're doing a gymnasium and you could build a split face on the outside and the acoustical absorber on the inside and a single wall system. But nowadays, because of uh, the um, energy codes, this wouldn't work, but you could use it towards the another classroom or hallway or something. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to go through this, but just to let you know how this cost comes in. And this was done on a, a real life um, gymnasium multi-purpose room that was 20 foot high, 96 foot long, 64 foot wide. And they calculated the CMUs and and they put in how many acoustical masonry units that they would substitute. And then they did a cost, or we did a cost analysis of both on the fabric panels and what that would cost to put the block up and then add the panels. Or if you were to, to come in and just remove some of the concrete masonry and replace them with acoustical concrete masonry. And what, you, what we found out was the acoustical concrete masonry was actually more expensive. But on a job of this size, it was not that great. I mean, $356, or it was 2% increase in cost, but you don't have to replace them. 10 years or 15 years, they won't get dirty, they won't fall off the wall. They will be there for the life of that building. And they, I think they look attractive as well. Yeah, the durability and just the attractiveness of these projects, you can't beat it. Um, and I think you might have mentioned it, Carrie, but just the fact that it's, it's built in and not having to add add that in later is definitely a nice advantage when you're doing building projects. Mm -hmm. And then just standing here with a few applications, on treat or treating rooms, auditoriums, you have to have some sort of acoustical treatment. And you can, on the upper left, there there's some add-ons or they're built in on the other two pictures, sound blocks in, that's uh, acoustic. Band rooms, now here again, uh, on the left-hand side, you have these add-ons. And uh, although this isn't, this is not bad because if you fill that, those concrete blocks solid, that would be a really good NRC so that band room doesn't go, let's say, to a classroom on the other side. However, you can also do it built in, but if you did it on the right, you just can't put the masonry units in because sound could get in there and flank and maybe come out on an electrical outlet on the backside. But if you were to do it on the right-hand side, you'd want to fill the back portion of that solid like they did on that Wacker presentation. So you have excellent absorption within the band room and a great STC so it doesn't escape that room. Cafeterias, here's a, a sound cell and add-ons and sound block. Add some attractiveness to it versus just hanging some panels. And I look at uh, high school kids with food and those panels, might not be that clean after a couple of years. Here's another application where these are almost identical structures, walls, hard hard walls, clear story windows, 
a truss roof bearing on it and the architect on the left had had to add on acoustical absorption and those things are only good for the mid to high range so if you're if you have tubas playing or bands playing or or a lot of things it's not going to be that effective and the smart architect on the right used concrete masonry with acoustical concrete masonry and absorbed all and he also offered a very attractive looking wall um, natatoriums here again you've got to add on versus actually building it within the wall you've got yeah a lot of noise problems generated sound bouncing off the water and the walls and so on it's good to have it there and so that concludes it and uh, so i appreciate everybody's time uh, our contact information is here on the screen if you are um if you are in need of acoustical concrete masonry units we have a section on the sound seal website that provides uh, the testing information it also provides a connection to local uh, block plants uh, concrete block plants so that that's going to be a good way for you to to get in touch with them P please feel free to reach out to us directly we can also get you in touch with them uh, it's the best way to get the blocks made and and included on your projects but we we can uh we can direct you to the correct people to get you pricing for for your projects So I guess that concludes our presentation today. Thank you everybody for joining us. And I uh, hope you learned something new about acoustical concrete masonry units today. I know I, I did. Yep. Thank you all.